Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for July 5th. We're reading today from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And we're in chapter 5 of Ephesians. I'm going to start at verse 15 and go through verse 20. Here we go. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, always and for everything, giving thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. I've always loved that uh, verse 19, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart. That's not really a part of Luther's teaching on this uh, verse 18 today, but, uh, but I've just always loved that verse. This is the Word of God. So Luther does write about verse 18, Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. God having in his infinite goodness so richly shed upon us in these latter times the gospel of light, we ought in honor and gratitude to him try to reform ourselves in the matter of intemperance. We should fear lest through this evil, besides committing other sins, we draw upon us the wrath and punishment of God. For naught else can result from the pernicious life of intemperance but false security and contempt of God. Individuals continually dead in drunkenness, buried in excesses, living like swine, cannot fear God, cannot be occupied with divine things. Such are the excesses now to be seen in the courts of princes, banqueting and drinking that one would think they meant to devour the resources of the country in a single hour. Lords, princes, and noblemen, the entire country, are ruined, reduced to beggary for the reason that God's gifts are so inhumanly wasted and destroyed. The evil of drunkenness has, alas, gained such ascendancy as to be past restraint, unless the word of God may exert some controlling influence among the few, the individuals who are still human and would be Christians. It is my opinion that if God does not sometime check the vice by a special judgment, even women and children will become inebriate, and when the last day arrives no Christian will be found, but all souls will descend drunken into the abyss of hell. Let all who desire to be Christians know that it is incumbent upon them to manifest the virtue of temperance, that drunken sots have no place among Christians, and cannot be saved until they amend their ways, until they reform from their evil habits. Just as idolatry and adultery are sins excluding from heaven, so drunkenness is a sin which bars from the blessings of baptism, from remission of sins, faith in Christ, and personal salvation. Hence, if you would be a Christian and be saved, you must lead a sober and temperate life. O oh God, how shameless and ungrateful we are! We so highly blessed of God in having his word and in being liberated from the tyranny of the Pope, who desired our sweat and blood, how ungrateful in the face of these things not to amend our lives in some measure in honor of the gospel and in praise and gratitude to God. Well, first of all, let us be clear. Luther loved beer, and he loved wine more. But being inebriated was not on the table. That's not the point. He loved uh, his adult beverages, as we politely say in Lutheran circles these days. But he was no drunk. That was uh, not part of the deal. He was very much against drunkenness. And the reason for that is because it uh, stole your time from God. It stole your, your relationship with God. <laughs> Frankly, with family and work and everything else, uh, if you are an uncontrollable drunk. But the main thing is that it steals your your affections from God. It, it doesn't let you think about God at all. It doesn't let you pray. It doesn't let you worship. Drunkenness um, destroys the person and what the person was intended for. So, I guess the idea here is let's not get drunk, but let's be filled with the Spirit. Let's focus upon our worship of God. Let's pray. 
Holy God, help us with all our sins, whatever it is that distracts from you, whatever it is that robs us of um, prayer, of worship, of singing psalms and hymns with and to each other, reminding each other of God. We can't do that, Lord, when we're drunk, but we can't do it when we're distracted by so many things. So help us, fill us with your spirit that we may be led to focus upon you always, every moment of the day. For Christ's sake, amen. Thank you for joining me this day. I hope you had a good celebration of independence yesterday, if you're watching from the United States at any rate. And uh, we did. Susan and I enjoyed the day, and we're going to continue to enjoy it with uh, friends, church friends today. So blessings upon your day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And I hope that tomorrow, when a new day comes, you'll join me here for Reading the Word with Luther.